Okay, uh, before I forget, we have a quiz on Friday covering the first four sections. So tomorrow, which is Thursday, after uh, the excitement of Night's Way, we'll have, uh, we'll cover the last section, which is 9-4, before the quiz. Then on uh, Friday, we'll take a quiz. I won't have a new lesson for you on Friday, but you will have homework after the quiz. So we'll have a couple minutes in the beginning to go over the 9-4 stuff, then quiz, then go away for the weekend. Okay? For the week. And... <laughs> okay, so first of all, we're going to compare, today we're going to compare circles, chords, and arcs. So if we take, I don't know how this is phrased. Okay, in, I can read. In a circle or congruent circles. That, li that little bit is important because you'll see why in a second. Two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. Remember the if and only if means it's reversible. Okay, so in this one sentence, we have a statement and its converse both being true. Which says simply, you got two congruent arcs, their chords have to be congruent. You got two congruent chords, their arcs have to be congruent. <coughs> Most of the time, it'll be in the same circle, but occasionally we'll get a little crazy and put them in different circles. Three scenarios. Left, middle, right. Julia, are the green arcs on the left congruent? Yes. Why? Because they have the same measure. And? The end part's a little more subtle. Well, bro. They're in the same circle. Both 50 degree arcs in the same circle must be congruent. Matt, middle scenario. Are those arcs congruent? Oh, okay. Um, no, because they're not in the same circle. Well, yes, they are. <laughs> I love that. With so many answers, I just look at them and they change their answer instantly. It doesn't matter. Matt, are you wearing a black shirt? Yeah. Black and red. <laughs> Are you sure? Pretty sure. Yeah, pretty sure. <laughs> Could get him to fully change. Oh, it is red. I'm thinking you make my head. So, uh, what's what's the answer here? Yes or no? No. Why not? I mean, yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's back up a second. Okay. Hey, Matt. Um, in that middle scenario, are those green arcs congruent? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. They're not. Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. How big is arc CD? It's 87. 87 degrees. Good. How big is arc BA? 87. Matt, are those arcs congruent? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> Now you don't know. You're completely confused. Emily, yes. what do you think? Uh, I think yes. You think yes, because they're both 87 degrees. Yeah. Okay. It's a solid argument. Matt, do you agree with her? Yeah. Just because you know if I say yes, I'll leave you alone? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Tom? I disagree. Sorry, guys. Um, because... Uh, you can have like a super big Did you circle? just apologize for disagreeing <laughs> yeah. with their answer? Yeah. Wow, that's so curious. I understand what you're doing. One, you can have a big circle, and you can have kind of like the one on the right. Well, we haven't gotten to the right yet. Well, I mean, I'm using that as an example. I understand. But like, you can have a big circle and a little circle. They're both 72, but the outer one is the CD, arc CD. Is bigger than RBA, so they're not congruent, even though they're the same measure. But what do we know about circles P and Q, Tom? We don't know anything. Huh? Very good. So what's the answer to the question? No. We don't know. 
No. no. All right, where are the rest of you at? How many think it's yes, they're congruent? How many think it's no? It is no. Now, how could we make it yes? You can mark one of these radii congruent to one of those radii. Now the circles are congruent. We're good to go. What about that one? Well, you pretty much already explained that one, right? Yeah. How big is arc AB? 72. How, how big is arc CA, or CD? 72. 72. But are those arcs congruent? Hopefully you would say no, because it's pretty obvious one is bigger than the other. Uh, so so never picture. That's true. <laughs> but that one's pretty OK to trust. <laughs> <laughs> Now we take a circle, run a diameter through it. That diameter is going to intersect a chord and an arc. If it is perpendicular to the chord, it will bisect the chord and the arc. Okay, so what we're starting with is a diameter perpendicular to a chord. And if that's true, then, because this is an if then, it's not reversible yet, then these two are equal and those two are equal. ET is congruent to ES and TR is congruent to RS. Okay. Bisects the chord, it bisects the arc. Bisects the arc, it bisects the chord. Most of the time, however, you're not going to deal with diameters. More than likely, you're going to deal with a radius. But the original theorem involved a diameter, so I left the diameter up there you're probably going to more likely look at GR being perpendicular to TS and then go from there. Okay, you with me so far? Faith, what kind of triangle is, if I had drawn it in there, what kind of triangle is GET, gopher, elephant, turtle? 90. Also known as a right, right triangle, good. Uh, Faith, what kind of triangle is uh, gopher, salamander, turtle? I didn't hear, I don't know if he's right or wrong. <laughs> Why? It is isosceles. Why? Other than because Tom. The two facing How do you know that? So you're saying angle GTS is congruent to angle GST. How do you know that? Because they're, they're <laughs> <laughs> is that what you just said? <laughs> you should just say something completely absurd and look at him like, you know what you're talking about, and blame him for some stupid answer. What kind of angles are those? Hippopotamus! Tom! <laughs> Alex, uh, why is GTS isosceles? Um, um, because IR bisects uh, TS and forms two ninety degrees, and then that mean um, that. Wait. Many of you are overthinking this, Jalen. Is it because um, IR bisects? ST, so therefore TE is um, congruent to E or SE, and so then when you make a triangle out of it, those two angles are going to be congruent, so therefore the same sides will be congruent. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a roundabout way to get there, but it's true. Yeah. So you prove triangle, if I understand your statement correctly, you prove triangle G-E-T congruent to triangle G-E-S because it bisects, you said E-T is congruent to E-S. Yeah. And they got 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. And G-E is congruent to G-E. Mm -hmm. So therefore, triangle, or angle G-T-S is congruent to angle G-S-T, which would make the base angles congruent, which is what Faith said, which would then make it isosceles. Yes. 100% correct. Okay. Not the easiest way to get there, Joanna. Um, GT and GS are both radii. Yeah, GT and GS are radii of the same circle, so therefore they're congruent. Okay. Doesn't matter; they're both correct. We get the same 
we get there the same way. Okay, we said that already. <clears throat> Perpendicular bisector of a chord is a diameter or radius of the circle. So this, in essence, is the converse of the previous slide. So if I come over here, I started with a diameter, I bisect a chord, it bisects the arc. So the next one then says, okay, well, let's start with a perpendicular bisector of a chord. We'll force it to be perpendicular, then it must be a diameter. Okay, same picture, it's just a matter of what we started with. The last one started with the perpendicular, got the bisecting. This one is starting with the bisecting and getting a diameter. Oh, yeah, 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 that's it, okay. While people are finishing up writing, do you all know what the Cajun cliffhanger is? No. no. All right, I'll explain. You good? No. There is a, uh, I don't even know if it's there anymore, but there used to be a ride at Great America and at Carnivals where you get in the big circular room and then it starts to spin. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, and then, yeah. start, and then the floor drops out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. area 51. Kind of. Oh, it's your day. Like, it's like the it's right yeah. 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 Oh, back in my day, it was the Cajun cliffhanger. <laughs> Maybe really? Cajun cliffhanger isn't a politically correct term anymore. Then the one you were, the other one, the floor doesn't, the floor doesn't drop out. Not anymore. No. No. You're like, I'm like, like why? Like, yeah, somebody got, off. yeah, somebody, <laughs> somebody just slid down their legs were crushed under the floor. Yeah. When the floor came back up, now, now he's got legs that are this long. They had to, like, yeah. they had to remove his shin bone so his feet are attached to his knees. Oh my god. <laughs> why, why is what is that? <laughs> oh my so god. Well, there's nobody who has their feet attached to their knees because of the Cajun cliff. That's so rude. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> I heard you say that to try to beat you. And if they do have their feet attached to their knees, we should bank fun of them. That's kind of weird. <laughs> what would a bike look like for them? <laughs> oh my god! Like it's racist. Well, it would be. No, able to, because no, they can't. Be able to go like yeah, that. they can't bend like the knees. Yeah. 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 yeah, like uh, like the old metal fire truck I used to have. Yeah, with the pedals exactly. Like that. Like that. <laughs> What if somebody is walked in on the class and talked about their feet at the end? Mr. Reedy, are you recording? I think I started the recording. <laughs> okay, so the reason I mentioned the Cajun cliffhanger is imagine you get into the Cajun cliffhanger with a large stick. I don't know why. <laughs> go with it. So all your friends are standing against the wall of the Cajun cliffhanger. You'd like to stand against the wall, but you can't get close to the wall because you got a giant stick in your hand. <laughs> And your friend. <laughs> this is so bad. Uh, it so your friend has the same length of a stick. You and your buddy at Great America, you're both carrying around a six foot stick. Hey, Bill. Let's ride the Cajun cliffhanger. What are we going to do with these sticks? Let's bring them with. So while everybody else is lining up against the wall, you and Bill are only going to be able to get so close to the wall which is going to be a big problem when it starts to spin. <laughs> I'm actually getting to a theorem here, I think. <laughs> Since you and Bill have the same length stick, you can both only get so close to the wall of the Cajun cliffhanger. Okay? So then this other guy walks in. He's got a stick, too. What are the chances? And, uh, Hank. <laughs> and you notice that Hank happens to be the same distance away from the wall that you and Bill are. What does that mean about a hang stick? It's the same, same length. length. Right. So. I don't understand what this has anything to do with this. Here's the stick. Here's your distance to the set to the wall. So if you start, you go into the center of the Cajun cliffhanger and you start walking towards the wall, your stick is only allow you to get so close. Bill will have the same scenario because his stick is the same length so he can only get so close and then so Hank, Hank shows up and Hank's the same scenario. Where's Hank's got the, the same length of a stick and he can get the same <laughs> distance away from the Cajun clip Hank. Okay. Is this like in a different plane? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah Tom. 
why wouldn't you just go under the sticks? You oh, can't just yeah. stick like right in front of you and be on the wall. Because it doesn't yeah. work that way. Yeah. It's it's Dennis, then it's like in front of you. It's a big wall. So, no, it's like an actual situation goes out. It's like it's like it's got no point. Tom, what can I see? Tom, 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 and I even if they did, don't you think somebody would say, hey, dude, just turn the stick this way? Yeah, that's what I was Okay, want to hear a story? Yeah. When I was young, I was on the... I'm sorry? When you were young, like back in the dinosaurs. Wow, you are just... Oh, you are just cruising for a bruising, aren't you? You are banned from talking the rest of the day. You think I'm kidding? Kick him out. So I'm on the Cajun cliffhanger. I'm probably uh, middle school age. Not really wanting to go on it because I don't like rotating rides. Who does? That's a bad decision. So I know what's going to happen. You know, you get in there and it starts spinning so fast that you're stuck to the wall and then the floor drops on. You just hang there and then the floor comes up. Okay, you know the ride, right? Yeah. We're about 30 seconds into it. Somebody Ralphs. Oh, oh. Did it like the wall? You're spinning and then I don't want to go into graphic <laughs> detail. Let's just say you would have been luckier to be short on that ride. Oh. <laughs> Let's move on. It's so bad. It's so disgusting. How awesome would it have been though if your brother got attacked by a moose arm? <laughs> On the Cajun cliffhanger? Yeah. yeah. It would have fallen in He's the on the board. Cajun cliffhanger trying to get against the wall with a six foot stick and a moose jumps over the edge of the And it's like mauling him and then it's like, it's of vomit everywhere. What would be even better is the look on your mom or dad's face when you're at the dinner table that night telling the story about, I was on the Cajun cliffhanger, this guy gets on with a six foot stick, a moose comes over the wall and attacks him. But they start the ride anyway, so me, the moose, this guy, and a stick are in the Cajun cliffhanger and the dude pukes. They'd send you for psychiatric help. What if the moose puked? On your brother. While he was attacking him. Yeah, so. The moose isn't wearing any pants, so what if he went to the bathroom? <laughs> I don't want to go to the bathroom. No, but if someone went to the bathroom, they'd be contained in their pants. The that moose doesn't have pants. <laughs> He's like He's thinking about it so seriously. <laughs> We're never getting out of this. I just want to know what the recording sounds like. Well, it'll be up later. You can listen to it. I'm going to get fired. Oh, no. The recording. We'll see. Well, we got pie to take care of. Oh, yeah. Let's, like, mark our favorite. All right. Suppose a 10-centimeter cord is 12 centimeters from the center of the circle. Okay. What does that mean? Uh, you get on the Cajun cliffhanger. You got a 12 foot, we'll change it to feet, you got a 12 foot stick, but you can only get 10 feet close to the wall. What's the circumference of the Cajun cliffhanger? So I put, the, I put the markings in here for you, but I won't always do that. GE is 12. And T, I got that backwards? Suppose it 10. Oh yeah, I got it backwards. So this is 10. So you got a 10 foot stick. And you can only get 10 or 12 feet close to this wall of the Cajun cliffhanger. What's the exact circumference of the circle? In order to get the circumference, we need to find the radius. And in order to find the radius, you got to figure out where is the radius in this picture. No, you're not allowed to talk. My check. IG. That's yes. one possibility, yes. We'll put an R there. Wait. GT is another possibility. We'll put an R there. There's a third possibility, about check. GR. GR. Any one of those will serve our purpose. Which ones do you think will work best? GT and GR. GT or GR, it doesn't matter which one. How long is ET the extraterrestrial? Five. 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 Why? Because it's a Perpendicular, bisect, bisect, the short, and the arch. How long's R then? Thirteen. 13, 5, 12, 13, triangle. So again, show the work two ways. You could do 5 squared plus 12 squared equals R squared, or you could do 5, 12, 
13 if you remember it being a triple. Whoops. Whoop. So we're looking for the circumference. So circumference is equal to, I know the radius now, so I'm going to use 2 pi r. And the circumference is equal to 2 times pi times 13. Uh, it, oh, it does say exact answer. 26 pi centimeters. Done. And then obviously if you want an approximate answer, you would multiply 26 times pi in the calculator and get using the pi button, not 3.14, and you would get an answer of... Uh, 70, 80, 70 something? 86. 81 point? Thank you. 81. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 81. Oh, so? Yeah, we'll be 81. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't believe you, but I just told yeah, 81, and all of a sudden he's sold. <laughs> I was just doing math in my head. Oh, that's a scary place to be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. More KG cliffhanger. In this picture, where are you and where is Bill? Sarah, where are you? You know, so you got the Cajun cliffhanger, you come in with a stick, you can't get, you know. Um, no. Well, you start there. You start at the center of the Cajun <coughs> cliffhanger, and then you go towards the wall, and you would end up at oh, Q. Q, and then Bill would be at R. R. Good. Simon, what does that chunk of information tell me? And don't say the EF is 24 and GH is 24. The distance from point E to point F is 24. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and? That E got F is congruent <coughs> to GH. Good. EF is congruent to GH, which means what? What do you get from that, then? That GR and RH, when I'm just being redundant. You're saying the same thing over and over again? You're repeating yourself? No, nobody got that? I got it, I got it. Right. Just wasn't that funny. Okay, go ahead. Back to you, Simon. Um, yeah, that GR and RH are both 12. Okay. So they're and so is EQ and EF. I'm with you. Keep going. Um, and so we can form a community. What are we trying to find? Well, I didn't ask you to find anything. I'm just asking for information. What else do you know from this picture, then? We haven't done any calculations yet. So let's review. You said EF is congruent to GH because you're told that they're both 24. Yes. They're perpendicular to a chunk of a radius, yes. so therefore they're bisected. You got 12 and 12. Yes. Is there anything else you get from that picture? <coughs> You're missing a vital chunk of information. Is PR and PQ congruent? Are they congruent? Are you asking me or telling me? I'm asking you. They are congruent because of the theorem we just talked about. That if the chords are congruent, then they're equidistant from the center of the circle. Okay. <coughs> Therefore, how big is X? Three. Three, which makes PQ? Nine. Nine, good. I had trouble with the math there. So this is nine. Got a whole bunch of radii to choose from there. EP, FP, PG, and PH. Choose one of them and find that. How long is it? 15. Why? Who's talking? Was that you, Julius? And what is it? 15 because why? Okay, one reason is a 3, 4, 5. 
times 3, or 9 squared plus 12 squared equals 15 squared. Find the circumference. Uh, again, we have the radius, so I'll use 2 pi r. So the circumference is equal to 30 pi. Or, since it doesn't stipulate, you could do it as... 94.2. Say again. 94.25 centimeters. Good. So feel free to draw in radii wherever you want because you're going to have to for a lot of these problems. Can I erase this? Okay, we're done. Let me stop the recording, then we'll talk about pi. Thank you.